Hello everyone. Welcome to BioPanji, your one-stop comprehensive bioinformatics training platform. I'm delighted to introduce myself as Shudipto, your very own Chote Panji. Today I'm going to talk about the base pairing in DNA and RNA. Interactions between nucleotide bases has been observed in numerous cases. Crystal structure analysis of individual bases, nucleosides, nucleotides, duplex DNA, triplex DNA, you name it. Earlier, Watson and Crick proposed the double helix structure that made it clear that interactions between complementary sequences give rise to the double helix. Now, the first question is, what is the molecular nature of this interaction between the two nucleotides? Is it charged attraction? Is it hydrophobic or is it something else? Well, let us find out guys. Let us take a look at all the nucleotides present in DNA. You can see the molecular structures on the left. On the right, we have the colored we have colored their molecular surfaces according to hydrogen bond donor acceptor potential and partial charge. Well, the first observation is the phosphates are highly negatively charged and they are hydrogen bond acceptors. So, you can easily understand that the two negatively charged phosphates are always going to reverse each other. Phosphate phosphate interactions cannot be the basis of stable. Base with interactions. On the other hand, bases include both the hydrogen bond donor as well as the acceptor sites. The interesting thing is each base includes at least one donor and one acceptor site. And look, partial charges of the base atoms are more inclined towards neutral. Guys, because of these properties, Bases of the nucleotides can interact with each other and form stable base pairs. This interaction is hydrophobic in nature. I would suggest you to watch our video on hydrophobic effect. For now, just a short and simple description for you. See that the nucleotide base pair formation follows the same physical principle as micelle formation by ampullite molecules. In micelle formation, the hydrophobic side chains cluster together to maximize the entropic gain and the polar head group face the bulk water to maximize the enthalpic gain. Nucleotides have analogous molecular structure. So here again, the minimum free energy structure is that in which the base pairs stack together and the phosphate face the bulk water. So, just keep in mind, hydrophobic effect and you understand the molecular basis of micelle formation, protein folding, nucleic acid structure, protein ligand interactions, and everything. Now, let us discuss about the major and the minor group. First, look at the central pan. The major and the minor groups are opposite to each other, and each runs continuously along the entire length of the DNA molecule. They arise from antiparallel arrangement of the two backbone strands. The major group is deep and wide. The minor group is narrow and shallow. Now, look at the left and the right side pans. Major and minor groups of AT and GC pairs are shown. You can easily see an interesting fact here. For both base pairs, there are three hydrogen bonding sites at the major group and only two hydrogen bonding sites at the minor. Only the major group of AT base pair includes a methyl group. Basically, there are four possible patterns of recognition with the major group and only two with the minor group. This is why proteins, those bind with the DNA in a single specific manner, target the major group. And the proteins that bind in a non-specific manner target the minor group. AT and GC base pairs are called the watson quinn base pairs. And these pairings are required to generate a perfect double helix. If this requirement is absent, many other base pairs are possible. 
In 1984, Sanger showed that only two hydrogen bonds are required to produce a stable base pair. The four bases can be arranged in 28 different ways into 28 types of base pairs. You already know the two, the AD and the GC Watson Crick base pair. Now, let me show you the other 26. There are seven homopurine base pairs that you can see here. There are two purines and two pyrimidines. A homopurine is a base pair between two identical purines such as an A pair. If two adenines are positioned as Watson Crick AT pair, they are symmetric, otherwise they are asymmetric. You can see that there are four symmetric and three asymmetric pairs possible. An AG pair is considered as a heteropurine base pair. There is only one symmetric and two asymmetric conformations. There are five homopyrimidine base pairs possible. Homopyrimidine means a thymine and a thymine and cytosine cytosine base pairs. Four symmetric and one asymmetric homopyrimidine base pairs are possible. You can see their conformation arrangements here. A thymine cytosine base pair would be called as a heteropyrimidine pair. There is one symmetric and one asymmetric pair possible. There are 10 purine pyrimidine base pairs possible. The symmetric ones are the Watson, Crick, AD, and GC. And there are 6 asymmetric purine pyrimidine base pairs. You can see their conformation arrangements here. There are some Special conformations often also the harmless structures, especially in transfer RNA or tRNA, ribosomal RNA, and intron RNA, reverse Watson Creek, Cox team base pairs, and so on. You do not remember everything, but just keep in mind that these are the asymmetric purine pyrimidine base pairs involving only two hydrogen bonds, and the rest is just a few clicks away. So, this is all for now guys. For further information on protein and nucleic acids, please keep watching the other videos of Biopundit. Please feel free to contact us in biopundit at gmail.com and in our Facebook page with suggestions, requests for videos and asking for technical help. If you like our videos, please hit the like button and help others by sharing it. For more updates, please subscribe to our channel, like our Facebook page. Bye guys. See you soon.